What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my wonderful co-host and lovely co-host, <laughs> <laughs> Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing hey, today? We're wonderful and lovely. Yay. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Great day to have a Chief Chat, right? Yes, we were just saying that it's a beautiful day here in Dallas, and if we have to be working, we're glad it's on Chief Chat. Absolutely. See, look at you. The check is in the mail, Julie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so today we have a very special guest, um, as, and he continues to serve as an advocate for our nation's veterans uh, well after hanging up the uniform. Well, not well after, because it's only been a year or so. So uh, without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Oh, Chief, we are so happy to have today's guest with us today. He is going to have so much great information for our viewers. He served our nation for 22 years in the Army, retiring as a lieutenant colonel, and he continues his life of service with the Military Officers Association of America, where he is the director of currently serving and retired affairs. Please join us in welcoming Mark Belinsky. Hey, Mark, 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 the second most famous Mark to have on Chief Chat right here. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Mark, thanks so much for joining us. We are excited to have you on and everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you have any questions for Mark, you can leave them in the comments there too. We'll, we will read those live throughout the broadcast. Now is a good time to start your watch party. You'll enjoy this interview with your friends. And if you're not following us, you should because Chief Chats are every week and you'll know who's coming up next. Awesome, awesome. So Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we really appreciate you taking some time to talk with us. Uh, can you tell us where you're calling us from today? Uh, I'm coming to you from Alexandria, Virginia, right along the Potomac, uh, and uh, happy to be here today. Awesome. So, Mark, kick us off. Tell us about the Military Offers Officers Association of America, better known as MOO. So we would love to hear about your mission and the services that you provide our active duty and retired officers. Well, thank you. So MOA is an awesome uh, organization. Uh, their motto is never stop serving. And we've got about 350,000 members. Uh, we're the largest military service organization in the U.S. and the fourth largest VSO. And we are uh, part of the Military Coalition, which is 35 uh, VSOs and MSOs that combine together to combine our advocacy power. Uh, right now, we've got the co-chair for uh, the TMC. And we are really focused on protecting the benefits of our larger uh, uniformed and military uh, community. So we represent all eight services. And although we're primarily an officer organization, we represent everybody to include uh, enlisted retirees, family members, uh, survivors, widows. Uh, and it is an absolute great organization that is always striving to continue to serve. Um, and uh, and I and we do even include uh, all, with the eight services, uh, most recently, our uh, space troopers and Space Force. Oh, Space uh, so Force. Got, man. Awesome. That's right. You got to get, get them in there, too. That's right. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, uh, and we've got a wide uh, spectrum of members. Uh, and it's uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, to be with uh, MOA since I retired about a year ago. Excellent. So you've talked about um, who you serve. Are there eligibility requirements or um, how, how do people get started? And then what type of benefits do they receive by being a member? Well, well, thanks for that question. So it's uh, we are primarily an officer organization and you can go to MOA.org. Uh, and although our uh, primary uh, mission is advocacy uh, uh, up on the hill, uh, talking to Congress, our lawmakers and professional staff members, um, we, you know, we also have a leadership role with uh, the Greater uh, Military Coalition. Um, and then uh, additionally, the, some other incredible services we uh, do provide for the greater military community is uh, some transition services. When I was first retiring from the military, uh, um, I got help from MOA on things like resume 
uh, writing and interview techniques and how to negotiate. Uh, and that was uh, a pretty significant uh, emotional event for having a lifetime in the, mm -hmm. the and still being really kind of focused on my last deployment to Afghanistan. And suddenly having, you know, these benevolent uh, experts from MOA and, and really, uh, you know, help, help put me on the right path uh, for transition. Excellent. Oh, yeah, no, it, it, I'm sure it's super difficult. Well, I mean, being in the military, you, you kind of know that you're going to reenlist until it's time to not reenlist anymore. And then you're trying to figure out, OK, so what am I worth? On the outside, and 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 it, you know what? If somebody offers me a job, like what's what's the going rate for, a, you know, whatever I did in the military? So uh, just having an organization that can help you out that, that seems uh, like something that people should take advantage of. Definitely, that's uh, it, it is a, a great. We do several uh, um, networking events and hiring events uh, uh, where we bring up bring people together in forums. Uh, and that's open to the entire uh, uniformed uh, community. Uh, and, and so uh, that, that is uh, fun to watch uh, as well because it, it's an emotional event when it's time to leave uh, the, the service. Absolutely. And it is, uh, it's really great to have a, a, what I call a gray beard kind of coach you about not just things about resume and, and how to negotiate, but also like culture and climate and what's a good fit. Because uh, that's certainly where I needed some coaching. Awesome. Well, it looked like you could shave your gray beard, so nobody that's, ever knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, uh, tell us about your career in the army. You know, every every soldier has a story, right? And so, uh, we, we we're definitely interested to hear some career highlights, and then how how your time in the army uh, served you better for your position in your current role. Well, well thanks, Chief. Uh, so. I had uh, a, a great career, uh, and I've, I had the privilege of getting to serve in, in uh, a lot of reconnaissance, uh, cavalry, and infantry units. And uh, the best way to describe it is I got to spend a lot of time on Freedom's Frontier, like on international borders, whether it was international border uh, in, on the DMZ in Korea uh, to uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, it was uh, that it was quite an adventure, uh, and uh, and you know the 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 great thing about being in those type of units is you're in such a tight knit uh, organization with great traditions. You know, I would have uh, made it as far as I did if it wasn't for my great non commissioned officers who were taking care of me the entire way. Uh, and then what you what I realized as I was retiring don't really ever unplug. You're always connected to your former service members, NCOs, your team. We're keeping in touch on social media. Everybody's you know, usually checking on everyone else or asking for advice. Um, and so that really, uh, that, that sort of uh, culture and climate helped was a, made the transition to MOA a good fit for me because you're always responsible. Uh, even after yeah. you retire, you're still responsible to take care of your team. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's what I do love about uh, working for uh, MOA is that that, res that responsibility uh, is uh, built in. Uh, you're, you're, you're always thinking about your former troopers, your former uh, uh, service members, that, all the ones you worked with and trying to uh, protect their benefits and also take care of things like their quality of life. Oh, and you're yeah. also you're also a military spouse as well, which I didn't realize until we were talking earlier this morning. Um, tell us about uh, about that. What that's well, like. that is uh, it, it's been an absolute uh, adventure. I, my wife is still active duty, and uh, we've we've moved around. We feel like we've moved around the world twice together. <laughs> Awesome. And as you can see by the pictures behind me, we both came from military families as well. We were both, you know, both had uh, parents that served in the army, uh, and um, it is uh, it's been uh, a great adventure. It's been challenging, certainly through uh, the combat deployments. Uh, uh, wife and I certainly did some uh, some iterations where we were, you know, I would deploy. Uh, come back, go on block leave, and then she would deploy. 
Uh, and there were, there were a few years like that that were, that were pretty challenging. So when, when we think about uh, what the current military families are going through, whether it's uh, through COVID or still a continuing deployment cycle, it's, or, or, or challenges with school or childcare, it, it's close to home because uh, it's still we're, we're still all very connected. Uh, you're still living that man, yeah. You're you're definitely still living it. My goodness. Right. <laughs> so your office uh, works with the Exchange Retiree Advisory Council. So can you talk to us a little bit about your role on that council and then how that helps strengthen the exchange benefit for military families like yours? So the ERAC is uh, great. Uh, and I know initially it kind of sounds like a whole bunch of <laughs> old retired guys <laughs> at the table, uh, you know, voicing <laughs> their, uh, you know, their complaints, their grievances to AFIs, but it's actually uh, not like that. It's a little bit about that, but, but most <laughs> of uh, sitting at the table with a lot of veterans organizations and military service organizations and, and having a two-way conversation about uh, challenges uh, for protecting the exchange benefit. Um, and most recently, uh, one of the things that we were really worried about uh, was uh, an effort to consolidate all of the exchanges and the commissaries together under one tent. Uh, and uh, our, our number one worry is we looked at uh, um, this business case analysis that this private consulting group uh, put together. And I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Office Space where they have the Bobs that show up. Yeah. Say you do here, Bob. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was like that, those kind of guys. Like they, they were looking to make cuts. And so we were really worried that any consolidation uh, would reduce the benefit and reduce the quality. Um, so, uh, so the ERAC together the advocacy power really reached out to our friends in the inspector general world and the government accountability office. And we said, hey, I wanna take a look at this business case analysis. Something's not quite right there. And, and thankfully uh, they agreed with us. And so we've got, uh, we, I think we've been pretty successful about getting some congressional oversight uh, to ensure that if, if any reform does happen, because we're not against reform to make things better. Uh, there's always some reform that'll be good, uh, but what we're really uh, cautious about is anything that's going to reduce the benefit or make things more expensive or reduce quality in the sake of cost savings. Oh man, so retirees, you have a voice. They, they're up in there grinding it out. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, organizations that Mark lead, you know, and other members of our council, they're, they, they're, they're going for your benefit. So, Trust and believe we're not making decisions in a vacuum. Oh, that's for sure. And we do really appreciate the AFI's uh, leadership, uh, uh, you know, ho hosting those ERACs and the transparency that's there. Uh, because that, uh, you know, being able to have that dialogue is critical. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I know, Chief, that uh, you're in there with the, uh, the board of directors and you get to see... Uh, the fights occur at the, the boardroom, and uh, I know it's tough business, so uh, thank you yeah. for everything you're doing there. Well, at the end of the day, whenever we're having these discussions, it's always about the benefit of the, the, the airman, the soldier, the, the Marine, whoever that service member, uh, everybody's fighting the same fight. It's just in a different way. So it's, uh, we're, we're definitely trying to do what's ever the best interest of the member themselves and their families. <laughs> And then Mark, so talking about your organization, um, has COVID changed the way your office works right now? Um, how have you been working through these unexpected times? Well, COVID certainly has changed uh, everything with us uh, going to uh, telework uh, and all of uh, the, really majority of uh, the, the staffers, professional staff members and uh, uh, staffers for up on the Capitol Hill are on remote as well. Um, so the positive thing about that is, you know, before COVID, you know, I would, I would get my suit and go up to Capitol Hill and go do person to person visits, which is my preference, uh, 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 members offices. Uh, and now we're doing it on Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Uh, 
Uh, so the good news is now I'm going to be able to get five or six meetings in a day, whereas before I was only getting two. Uh, uh, but the challenge is like the boundaries are gone uh, um, and you get meetings at all times of day and night. Uh, so there's, there's been some very good uh, productivity by leveraging technology and we've still been able to build relationships uh, uh, with uh, people who are quite frankly trying to do some really hard work in the COVID in environment, particularly with a continuing resolution uh, for uh, appropriations and the National Defense Authorization Act that's gonna be delayed till after uh, the election cycle. Um, you know, we're, it, it's tough work and MOA is apolitical. You know, we, we don't take a side uh, uh, politically, uh, but we're working with everyone, uh, but it's still, it's still difficult in this time period to, uh, to navigate uh, all of those, uh, those environments and, and make those, uh, um, those connections so that we can influence lawmakers. Awesome, awesome. So, um, so in your view, what are, what are the biggest issues facing your members right now, uh, kind of especially during the pandemic, but uh, what, what are your main things that you're hearing from the field? So chief, like the number one right now, without a doubt, is some planned cuts uh, to the military health system. Um, it, it affects the entire community even the currently serving. Uh, there was a plan uh, a few years back to uh, downsize some of the military health system and push, push more uh, dependents and retirees onto the civilian network. Uh, and in some cases, push more uh, active duty service members onto the civilian network with a transition of the Defense Health Agency. And with the COVID environment, uh, that, that, that's tough, uh, particularly when so much of the civilian medical network was relying on the military for help. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that, that is still a concern and we're, uh, we're keeping our close eye on the National Defense Authorization Act in uh, trying to protect uh, everybody to prevent things like uh, any dramatic uh, uh, increases for uh, tri-care enrollment fees or pharmacy uh, costs. And, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's going to be an enduring concern. You know, there's some other uh, priorities out there as well, uh, like uh, concurrent receipts for uh, retirees so that they can receive their retirement pay and disability pay or uh, even things like defense uh, resale enterprise where we're, we're keeping our eye and worried about any uh, uh, mergers that might cause a reduction in benefits. Uh, so those are things that are all on our radar in uh, just a few, uh, not to mention uh, are some of the challenges that all of the currently serving have had with uh, childcare in the corona uh, virus environment. I mean, that, that that's really difficult and uh, we, We've got some good connections uh, in Congress now that are really going to provide some help to military families. Yeah, and so my, my background is health services, and uh, we were, you know, we we were knee deep in the in the transition into the DHA and looking at the NDAA and trying to figure out uh, what's getting cut and you know cutting actual military service positions and and all that that stuff. But yeah, we were trying to figure out ways. Uh, and I told my group commander, I was like. I don't know how we're going to tell these retirees they got to go to the pharmacy out, you know, out in town. And when they're so used to coming in and, and we were trying to give them other options, but they, they are pretty committed to coming on base, uh, picking up their medication or, or being seen by, the, by those doctors. So yeah, the, uh, I'm, I'm, I got my ear to the streets on that as well, just trying to figure out where that's going to go. Um, so um, I, I, I totally understand uh, what, what they're going through or what they're thinking about. Yeah, it's tough. When you look at the numbers, uh, you know, the conditions a few years ago were very different than they are now. And uh, the, the plan cuts to 18,000 uniform military medical billets. Uh, it just seemed like a good idea right now, uh, particularly yeah. with coronavirus. And then uh, regarding the, the retirees and stuff, I, you know, I have a lot of uh, connections where my first uh, NCOs really coached me when I was in uh, uh, my uh, first unit uh, in Germany, 1st Battalion, 4th Infantry, they're all retired now. And a lot of them chose to retire near a military installation because they want to go to the hospital and the PX and maybe the club uh, and the commissary. 
And uh, as those things start to erode, you know, they're, they're pretty vocal to me about, hey, you gotta, we, we gotta stop the erosion of these benefits. Yeah, absolutely. So you touched on military resale um, in some of your previous answers, but as you know, the exchange is considered an important non-paid benefit for service members and their families. Can you talk to us about why the exchange matters and maybe share a time or two that the exchange was there for you and your family? So first of all, like the, the first thing that pops into my mind when I think about uh, AFIs is uh, living on a combat outpost in Iraq uh, for months at a time and making the, uh, making the trip to a FOB to get to go to uh, the AFI's uh, shop at and middle <laughs> there. I mean, that, that might seem like uh, something uh, a little simple, but the fact that you can go in and get uh, some snacks, a Gatorade, and, uh, you know, stock up on chips and, and uh, razors, uh, especially when you're living uh, in uh, a deployed remote uh, austere environment, uh, that, that's huge for morale. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, I, I just can't uh, describe that uh, as much as like the, you know, uh, you know coming off of a uh, combat patrol where you've been white knuckling it, <laughs> worried about hitting the IED and then having that instant relief of Oh, I get to get to a PX. Oh my gosh! Oh yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it is an instant relief. Um, I, I think the uh, uh, back home, uh, you know, the exchange has always been, uh, you know, kind of a special place to get to go. Even as a kid, when I was an army brat, uh, to go it was like a privilege. Uh, but the MWR in particular, like I, I know not everyone knows that the, the proceeds from AFIs go and they fund MWR, but uh, particularly for all my uh, young infantrymen out there, when they're living uh, life in the barracks uh, as a single, uh, single service member, uh, some of those MWR uh, facilities and services are, are just, you know, mean everything. Uh, and and so those, those are all directly due to uh, the great leadership at APHES. And, and so those are things that, I, that come to mind immediately. That's wonderful. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I'm glad you mentioned some of the stuff that you maybe bought. That was my next question is, what was your, what was your favorite thing or what did you look forward to most when you, you know, knew that you were going to get to go visit that tent or the truck or? Oh my gosh. Well, um, and, you know, it was, it was usually, uh, you know, the, the snacks, uh, that was the first thing you're going to grab. You're grabbing chips, beef jerky, Gatorades, um, we hear soda a lot, like Coke or Pepsi. That's right. You, you a little bit of soda. Some of that we could get, uh, we could get from the locals. Uh, but, uh, it was all the stuff we couldn't get um uh, uh from our uh you know from the local the local market um and then uh and then i you know it might sound silly but in afghanistan i can remember thinking man if i could just get uh some shampoo and deodorant i would be so much happier <laughs> it's, Absolutely. It, it's just like the simple things like you know when, when it's uh, over 100 degrees for several months in a row and you're uh, just always dirty. Uh, uh, those little things make a big difference. Yeah, I can attest to that because uh, when I deployed, I was um, going to going to the PX or the BX or going to the gym. Kind of was like a weekend thing, like your Saturday and Sunday, right? That's right. And so, and so uh, you know, those were just huge events for for us while we were deployed. So I totally totally can relate to that. And then Mark, just want to pause for a second um, to look at the, the live feed. So you're getting great reception on our Facebook feed. We have a comment, Wayne Hodge here from Santa Fe, Texas. I'm an exchange retiree with 35 years of service to the military community. Um, and then I also want to say from the exchange to you, thank you for your service. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, couldn't uh, couldn't do it without uh, the, the entire community, um, and so really appreciate it. And then before we wrap up, Mark, 
Um, can you remind our viewers where to go to find more about MOA and how can, they can get involved? Absolutely. So uh, the website is moaa.org. Um, and you can, anyone can go on there and they can get an update on our advocacy efforts and how to contact uh, their lawmakers. Uh, and additionally, uh, there is the Military Coalition. Uh, so you can go uh, just do a search in Google, the Military Coalition, and you'll see all 35 members. And you'll also see a lot of letters that we've written uh, to uh, Congress. And please feel free to copy those and put your own name on it and send it to your elected representatives. Uh, because every voice really does count. Uh, and these representatives um, are reading the correspondence. They appreciate a phone call. They appreciate a letter. Uh, and particularly during an election year, uh, your voice matters a little bit more. Uh, so I, I can't encourage everybody to, to j just send a short note uh, uh, about your concerns to uh, your uh, elected officials. Awesome, awesome. So man, Mark, we've had a great time chatting with you today. Uh, we appreciate all the great information that you share with us in our, in our, in our um, community. Uh, thank you and your family for your service and sacrifice. I know uh, you've went from service member to, to military spouse <laughs> or dependent, which is not a bad gig, I, I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. But uh, it, it definitely has a challenge, especially with school not being in and all kind of other things. So uh, thank you for that. Um, this means so much to our airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coasties, and Space Force personnel. That's right, space troopers. Space troopers. Space troopers, oh, <laughs> love yeah. that. Official so now. We, we wish you all the best and, uh, and you can, as you continue to make a difference and continue to serve. So thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, Chief. And thank you guys. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, and if you don't mind staying on after uh, the live feed, uh, I, I gotta get some information from you. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, have a good one. Bye, Mark. Bye. All right, bye. Bye, y'all. <laughs>